Thanks for joining, everybody. Welcome to the Coding Zoo. I hope you're having a great week. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. This is the Coding Zoo Java playlist. And in today's lesson, we're going to cover Java lambdas. It's close to uh, programming with functions. So hey, if, if that interests you, stick around. We're going to jump right in. So before we begin on the code, uh, if this is your first time uh, watching us and you'd like to learn more about Java or even HTML, JavaScript, CSS, there is a button below uh, called subscribe. Click that button and click the bell icon so you'll get alerts and you'll be able to see our upcoming videos as we get more and more into Java and other languages. Um, let's jump into the code. So, so right here, I have a class that I've created. It's called Student Registry. So imagine you're registering students for a school. Now, this class uh, encapsulates a list of students. So I have an array list of students, and I can add to that array by calling uh, register student. So I'll use this class to create an object, and then I'll add student names to the registry by calling registry student. Now, what if I wanted to print out this list of names, and I wanted to print out different uh, different things. Maybe I want to print out to the console. Maybe I want to print out to the paper. Maybe I want to print it out to an email. I might have different strategies for printing. Well, how could I do that before? Well, before you can create um, either an, a regular object or you can create an anonymous object. An anonymous object first starts with an interface. Here's an interface right here. Private interface printer and print. Now I'm defining one method similar to defining one function, um, and that's the interface. And then I can create different anonymous classes for that interface. Here's one anonymous class for that interface. It's right here. So I'm saying printer print equals new printer. Now, it's it wouldn't let me just stop there because printer is not a class. It's an interface. You can't instantiate uh, interface. You have to provide um, an implementation. So my next few lines there actually provide the implementation of that anonymous class. So hopefully you're familiar with anonymous classes. If not, we'll have videos on that coming up. Um, so I have printer, and then I implemented that printer interface, and uh, it has print, and it prints out the name. So look at all the code it, take, it took to make that particular anonymous um, class. So let's real quick, let's run that. So I'm going to go back to uh, this. I'm going to go to this class here. So here's a main class that I created for explaining lambdas. I, I create a student registry object and I add students uh, to the student registry. I register Shane, Christina, Nick, Jai, and then I do a print all. So let's run that real quick. And if you look down in my console here, you're going to see that I printed all the names out. So that's how you would use an anonymous class. Well, that's you know that's quite painful, uh, and, and, it's, and it's a lot of code to maintain. How can you do it better? Well, you can use Java lambdas. So let's get into that. So I'm going to comment this out. I have my for loop that I use to call this anonymous class. Now in that for loop you'll see that I actually called the anonymous class and I had to call the method on it. I couldn't just call print. I actually had to call the class, so the object rather. So I'm going to comment that out. Let's go back to here. I'm going to get rid of this interface that I had to create. Comment that out. I'm going to go back up to here and let's show how you would do it with uh, a basic a lambda. All right, so here's my students array, or students list rather. I'm calling the method for each on it. It's a new uh, feature uh, in the array list. Um, and I'm going to pass in a lambda. So this is my lambda right here. So you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm basically, I'm basically um, creating an input parameter. So I'm doing parentheses, string, name, and then in parentheses. 
And then I do a dash and then a greater than sign, open curly bracket, and I do a system out print to print that name, close curly bracket. Now this highlighted right here is basically my Lambda. It, I'm creating a function. It's not tied to a class and I'm just passing it in. I'm not having to call, I'm not having to create a printer and then calling printer.print. I'm just creating basically what looks like a function and just passing it into this for each method. Let's see it work. All right, so there we go. It ran and again, it printed out the list. I'm gonna put a breakpoint there and I'm gonna debug it just so you can see that. Switch to debug mode and you'll see it stopped. So it's in this Lambda and it's taking in the first name, Shane. If I press to go forward, it's gonna come back. Now it's printing the next name. So it's calling that method one after another for every entry in that list. So that is a basic, simple Lambda. Um, it takes in a parameter, dash, greater than sign, and then bracket, put your code. Now that code can be more than one line, it doesn't have to be just one, and then in your bracket, and that's it. That's your complete Lambda. Now you could also pass in, you know, you could have Lambdas that take in more than one parameter, just separate them just like when you're defining a method. Um, and you could also return something. You don't have to just have void being returned. You could return something. But let's move to the next example. I'm going to comment this out again. Now, that is kind of the actual, you know, we saw how interfaces uh, or anonymous classes were kind of, you know, kind of took a lot of code to, to do something simple. Uh, let's look at, let's look at, um, what it takes to make this even more simple than it already is. One way we could do this is kind of shorten it up some. So because I'm only passing in um, one parameter, I don't have to put the parentheses. I'm just passing in one parameter. If I was passing in one or more, uh, passing in more, I'd have to put parentheses around it and put a comma. Since I'm only passing one, I don't need the parentheses. I'm going to do name dash greater than sign. And because I only have one line, in this Lambda expression, I don't actually have to put the brackets either. Now, if I had more than one line, I'd have to put the curly brackets open and close. So since I don't have that, I don't have, to, since I only have one line, this is another way of writing it. It's a lot shorter, right? Let's run that. And there we go. Printed out the names again. All right, let's go back. I think I can make that even shorter. How can I make that shorter? So I'm going to go, here's what I've got here. It's already one line, but I think it can be even less uh, characters on that line. Um, let's do that. So I'm going to go to this next example. I'll uncomment that. And if you look at what I have here, I have students and four each. And because um, I'm passing in one variable, and uh, of course, this is a list of one type, which is a string, and because I'm passing in one variable, and because I'm calling one line of code, uh, and that one line of code calls a method on an object that has one parameter, like print line, then I don't need to actually do the name to show the parameter I'm passing in. I don't actually have to use the arrow, um, the dash uh, greater than sign, and I don't actually have to pass the variable into the method. I can use what's called um, method inference. So I can do it this way by typing uh, system.out. So think of out as an object. And what's my method on that object? It takes into one parameter. Well, it's print line. So I do system.out colon colon print line. So that's even much smaller, much simpler. This is called method inference. Now we'll have a, a video later on going in depth on, on more how this works and, and how you can use this. This is just a quick sample into that. All right, let's run it. And there we go, printed the names again. 
So we went from having this anonymous object that had this implementation and another for loop and an interface to back it up to um, just using a regular Lambda here to using it another using another using that same Lambda shortened a little bit here with no uh, parentheses, no uh, squiggly, no squiggly block. And then we went to just using method inference, much smaller, much simpler, pretty neat. All right, let's go over one more thing. You know, I talked about earlier, one cool benefit is I'm creating a uh, basically what's like a function really and truthfully behind the scenes. I don't think it really is just a function. There is an object involved, but you don't have to code for it. You don't have to code it. It's, it's basically uh, you're programming with that functional like um, type. Um, that functional like syntax. So last thing, on this object, I created uh, a method called print all. And I want to pass in um, a function to this print all. Well, if I go back and look at this for each on this array, you will see that the for each takes in a consumer and that consumer is basically um, an interface so if i were to open that up and uh, look at the implementation you'll see consumer here now that consumer um, is basically let's open that up an interface it's a functional interface and it defines uh, a parameter i mean uh, and it defines a method. All right, so I'm going to go back. So I can see that for each um, takes in a consumer uh, interface. So I'm just going to use that interface myself. And I'm going to create a method called print all. Here it is. So I just used that interface. It was already created. That interface is called consumer. It already takes in a string and, and returns void. That's exactly what I need for this print all. So I'm just going to go ahead and reuse it. Here it is right here consumer and I'm calling the variable printer. So my print all takes in a printer and that allows me to have a student registry and whoever is using that student registry can pass in their own implementations of that consumer interface, their own printer, whether it's print out to email, print out to the paper, print out to the console, print out to JSON, print out to XML, you get the gist. So let's see that in action. Now, this is a functional interface. It's really what enables inter uh, lambdas to work. And we'll go over that in the upcoming video on functional interfaces. So I'm gonna go back down to the bottom here and I'm gonna get rid of this print all. I'm, I'm gonna call the print all that takes in a consumer interface. Uh, and this uh, is a functional interface. So I'll go here and uncomment this. All right, so you'll see here, I'm creating a consumer console printer. I'm using name and I have the um, Lambda syntax dash greater than, basically an arrow pointing right, uh, open bracket and close bracket, and then um, the semicolon. Well, of course, we've already showed you. Um, we can do that a little bit simpler I'm going to make that a little bit simpler. Use method inference. All right. So in this case, I'm printing out to the console. That's what my printer does. It's a console printer. Now, I could create other ones, you know, email printer. We've already gone over that. I won't say that list to you again for the third time. Um, and now, so I've created this console printer and I'm going to pass that printer in. I'm passing this printing strategy in, this printer strategy in, right? Um, and this is uh, an API for a student registry and the person or the programmer that uses that student registry and uh, uses that API for whatever they need a student registry for can pass in their own printers. So you can create all kinds of printers for student registry. All right, let's run it. And there we go. So 
We printed out Shane, Christina, Nick, and Jai. Let's see if let's make sure it's going in a print all. Let's put a little break point there. And let's run it one more time. I'm gonna run it in debug mode. And there we are. So here's my consumer interface. The implementation, of course, uh, is that Lambda expression that I just created. You'll see it. Uh, it says Lambdas on the screen there. You might be going off the screen a little bit. You can't see that. But, uh, well, here, let me slide it over. You can probably see that. But anyway, so I'm passing in my Lambda. I'm using that functional interface. I'm passing it to my for each. And then I'm just um, printing it out. So hey, that, that's it. That's a brief introduction to Lambdas. They're really very neat, quite uh, useful, especially when you start getting into streams. And we're going to cover stream videos coming up. Definitely stick around for that. Come back and see us for that. That's going to be, it's very interesting. It's very powerful. Uh, these concepts have been out for a few years. If you haven't um, started using them yet, you definitely want to learn them and get used to them. It is definitely a better way of programming and taking care of certain problems. So, hey, thanks for joining. If you liked the video, click the like button, please. If you have any questions, if I didn't explain something well to you, hey, just let me know. I'm here to help you. I'll explain better in the comments. Uh, what do you think about lambdas? Underneath, they're really truly not functions. They're still objects, but it's one step closer. Uh, definitely a lot better paradigm uh, to be able to have that in your uh, toolkit when you need it. So if you uh, haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, click subscribe uh, and click that little bell icon so you'll get alerts. And I hope you had a great week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.